What's up everybody and welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Today we're going to talk about a little something that is the big talk on YouTube right now. And it's kind of like a big talk in general in the bodybuilding industry and it's about the whole bio grow thing. And people are like, Jerry, you get paid by his story. Jerry doesn't get paid by his story. Jerry, Jerry doesn't get flown out by his story. Um, while it's true that these other guys are sponsored and getting paid, Jerry is pretty much the only one who's not getting paid, okay? And that's fine because had the product not worked, I'd be telling you right now that it sucks. Now, I wanted to understand before I even took the product what it was. And I think that a lot of people out there, I'm saying 99% of you are not fucking getting it. And I don't know if it's because it's being explained to you wrong. I mean, I've read, you know, Isatori's, um, I don't know, mission statement about it, what it is. And I guess some people, if you're not really into this stuff, you don't know what it means. Now, let's back up for a second. Now, years ago, let's, let's face it, let's, now, bioactive peptides are what's actually in the BioGrow, which are derived from colostrum. So it's not like they just took a scoop of colostrum, threw it in the bucket, and that's what it is. That's not what's in there. So what is a bioactive peptide? Now... Protein essentially is broken down into amino acids, okay? Those amino acids can be configured into chains, okay? Like little chains, like these little linked together, okay? Inside synthetic human growth hormone, those are protein peptide chains linked together. If you squirt the water directly into the vial of the growth hormone with the powder when you're reconstituting it, it breaks those chains and destroys it. If you take the growth hormone in the water and you shake it, it breaks the chains and destroys it. Technically, it's not a drug. It's a protein peptide, okay? Now... How did they make this, this growth hormone? How did they synthesize it? They took chains of amino acids, sequenced them together in the right sequence to make up what growth hormone actually is. The hormone is a protein peptide mixed together. Now, these chains of amino acids have been something that scientists have experimented with for a long time. And it's something that I'm not going to say it's fairly new, but they're breaking ground on a lot of new things with it. So when you have something like you know, amino acids, regular amino acids, right? You can take the powder form, you drink them, or you can take it and inject it. Either way, it's going to get into your system. Now, they've had injectable amino acids, and this athletes used this back in the day before they were, when they're trying to beat drug tests, and maybe they fucking do now. But they get bags full, IV bags full of amino acids, put that shit in with the saline solution, and fucking IV that shit right in their fucking body to increase protein synthesis, okay? Now, the extra aminos increase protein synthesis. They can be introduced intravenously, intramuscularly, or orally. They work all the same way. Now they found that if they took some of these amino acids and they put these new chains together, okay, you made these new protein peptides, which thought before would not work, okay? Now you have stuff like CJC1295 with and without DAC. You have GHRP2, you have Ipamarel and Ceramarel, and you have all of these protein peptides. Melanotan, you have shit, um, Follistat, no, it's Follistat one. I don't think Follistat actually is one. But you have all these protein peptides now that, let's face facts, I mean, I guess, when did I first hear about this shit? Probably 2007. I think 2006 or 2007 is when I first tried peptides, okay? Protein peptides, the shit that you can get everywhere now. It was so underground, nobody had it. And everybody's like, this is fucking bullshit. And a few guys tried it and they said, wow, it works. It's not as good as steroids. It's not as good as growth hormone, but it works. And it caught on quick within from 2007 so within seven years there's fucking websites all over the world that allow this stuff for research purposes only but people know now that shit if you take these protein peptides okay these chains of amino acids that are put together you can get similar results to human growth hormone it's similar to taking three IUs of human growth hormone now these protein peptides are sequences of amino acids and chains they're finding a way that certain ones put together can mimic the effects of these other ones. But they can be taken orally. They can pass the stomach. So the bioactive peptide that's pulled out of the colostrum is those amino acids. They're cleaved. They're fixed so that they are now something new. Although derived from a natural source, it is now something that is technically enhanced and changed and altered. Although it still comes from a food source. Very similar to if you took waxy maize comes from, I believe it's corn. They take corn and, well, why don't you just fucking eat corn? They take that and they make it into waxy maize. Well, is that now a drug? Is it now done, not work? No, it, it absolutely works, but it's derived from it and it's no longer that original thing. So you see, like, everybody jumping on the bandwagon going, oh, it's just colostrum. We know colostrum doesn't work. I've used about four different kinds of colostrum in my life and I've used shitloads of it. And I mean enough to where it made me sick and it did nothing. 
and I stacked it with OKG, ornithine alpha ketoglutarate. I stacked it with GKG, glutamine alpha ketoglutarate. I've stacked it with CLA. I've stacked it with all kinds of shit and saw nothing with it. The first week on the BioGrow, I saw something on it. I was fuller. I was more pumped. I could see it. And I've told Carrie this many times. The only thing that consistently changes when I lose those effects is when I stop taking the BioGrow when we travel. That's it. I've just recently begun starting to add more to see how much you can push it because if it's not hormonal, it's not affecting your body, maybe more is better. Who knows? You know, I usually go with the, the guys that more is not better, but we'll see because nobody really knows about this product, how it works like that yet. But it's definitely not a colostrum. It's the bioactive peptides. Please go into Google right now and Google bioactive. You guys heard that fart. That was, that was Bruno. <laughs> bioactive peptides and read what they are. It's something completely, I wouldn't say it's completely new. It's been around for a little bit, but that technology is advancing, and it is absolutely, you have sublingual things. Here's a perfect example, okay? There is a um, hot beverage nutrition, which is the, the product that I promote that my friend Steve Reeves made for boosting your immune system. It has a probiotic in it, okay? Now, most probiotics have to be kept cold. The reason being is they die. Now, Steve has developed, uh, he didn't develop the technology, but he found a, a, a technology that was developed where they encase the probiotic almost like a seed, like a spore. So where you do not have to keep it refrigerated, and you can also pour it in coffee and tea, and it will still get through your stomach and work. It's another way of delivery. Now, five years ago, they would have thought that would be impossible. That's not going to happen. Nothing like that could ever happen in the entire world. But it's there, and it works ten times better. You could take a thousand billion less um, microbacteria than you would normally with the refrigerated ones. Why? Because it actually works better. You can take a lower dosage of it and it still works 10 times better. So you see, there are tons of things on the market that are, you know, are cutting edge and they're coming out. And the problem is people don't understand. I mean, even if you fucking Googled, I, I mean, I Googled it, it's a bioactive peptide. Let's see, you know, what people are reading because they're obviously not looking deep enough into it and know what it really is. And I think it can get confusing. So I don't know if this is helping you guys understand any better. So I feel like I can explain things a little bit better in kind of the regular person type you know, not science wing, not, not, you know, too over the top plain language type deal, but it is absolutely something that is more than likely going to be something in the future that a lot of companies are doing as it's progressing. It's the same thing as, you know, BCAAs were unheard of until they put the shit together and fucking made a study on it. And all of a sudden now it was the best thing in fucking the world. They found out leucine you know, increases protein synthesis by whatever. Well, why didn't they know that 100 years ago? <laughs> well, maybe not 100 years ago, but you guys get the point that I'm trying to make. The bottom line is, you know, you're taking isotories or anyone else's word at face value. Some of these people are telling you that it cannot work, but they suggest taking peptides, other peptides. Well, how the fuck do you think those work? How, what do you think those are made out of? And what do you, how do you think those are developed? And did you know that some of those are active orally? <laughs> Amazing, right? So I hope this clears up a little bit of the confusion and check out the bioactive peptide. Just fucking Google it. And uh, if you don't understand it, hit me up via email and I'll try to explain it again in another video if we can figure out a better way to get the information across. So biostertraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biostertraining.com is the blog. And there we're, this is the bioactive peptide bicep. And they're in there, bitch. And we're out.